Hello, hello everybody. Welcome back to the stream. We are playing Return of the Phantom of the Opera. Uh, yeah, the older games have this separate intro option, guys. I wonder if the start button includes the introduction or not. <laughs> so, just in case, I think we should click the intro button. Welcome everybody to the stream again. This is a very, very old game. The Paris Opera House. An enchanted evening! The present day. Let me know if the game is too loud. It looks a bit loud. It sounds a bit loud. Tonight, Christine Florent in the 8081 score of Don Juan Triumphant by Eric, the Phantom of the Opera. So this is like the sequel to the Phantom of the Opera. It is a return of the Phantom, guys. The catacombs deep below the theater. The Phantom. Tonight is a world premiere of the legendary 8081 <laughs> score of The piece supposedly written by Eric, the madman once known as the Phantom of the Opera. As the opera begins, no one considers the possibility that the composer himself might also attend the performance. Eric? After all, the skeleton was found deep below the theater in the catacombs over 100 years ago. Wow, it's been so long, guys. Oh, the channel. The chandelier is is it going to drop? Doesn't look very secure, guys. Christine, is that you, Christine? <coughs> it fell on top of the audience, guys. It's right above the audience. It's going to be a bloody mess. All the glass shards and the wireframes. Alright, so that was the introduction. If we press the start button now, does that 
There is a difficulty level. Oh my. No vice challenging. You know these older games, they are very difficult compared to these newer games. So I am tempting to just pick no vice. Yeah, let's do that, guys. No vice. Ah, Monsieur Montand, there you are. Step down here, please. I wish to speak with you. I am glad I picked the opening choice, guys. So this start button does not include the opening. <laughs> we picked the right choice. Mr. Monsieur Mortand, is that me? Yeah, I'm Morten, Monsieur Morten. The seeds look quite comfortable. They are covered in a plush red material that resembles velvets. These are classic old opera houses, guys. So where is the chandelier guy? Whoa! Fell right on the seats! How many people got crushed? How many people died? As manager of the opera, I just wanted to thank you, monsieur. We were so fortunate that you were attending the premiere tonight. Without your assistance in caring for the victims and dealing with the ensuing chaos, the situation would have been much worse. I thank you for all you have done, Raoul. It is not every detective with the surete who is also a patron of the opera. I do hope you will continue to investigate this horrible tragedy. I'm afraid we have only just begun. Let us discuss how to proceed. Raoul, our name is Raoul. <laughs> From the original Phantom of the Opera, guys. Uh, no need to thank me, Monsieur Brie. No need to thank me, Monsieur Brie. I have voice acting, thank you. Nonsense. You acted admirably and valiantly. I hope you will continue to do so when I tell you what I have to say. I can understand how upset you are about all this. I can understand how upset you are about this. Upset? For heaven's sake, there's a madman loose. He might strike again at any moment. Tell me everything you know about this. There are a lot of lunatics in Paris. I firmly believe that this is a copycat crime. Copycat crime? <laughs> so what, what, what do you mean? This happened before, many, many times before. We got a serial chandelier dropper here. <laughs> copycat crime. What do you mean by copycat crime? Why do you not see? This is precisely the same crime committed by the Phantom of the Opera in 1881. Oh. Someone is trying to make us think that the Phantom has returned. You think so? But 100 years ago, guys, or maybe something like that. So I doubt <laughs> the Phantom is still alive. Maybe his descendant, his offspring, his son. Not even the son, even maybe the grandson, the great grandson. Tell me more about the Phantom. His name was Eric. He lived below the opera while the thing was being built. He caused a lot of havoc because he was in love with an ingenue named Christine Day. Some of his things were found at the turn of the century, so he must have died sometime between 1881 and 1900. Christine Day. So, the, the actress on stage, is she related? Christine Day? Any relation to tonight's star? You mean Christine Florent? No, I do not think so. But they share the same first names, guys. Just like me having the name Raoul. What things were found? 
his mask, the original score to his opera, Don Juan Triumphant, and a wedding ring, supposedly the one he originally gave to Christine Day. She returned it to him before she disappeared with her lover, the Vicomte de Chaunay. His name was Raoul too, by the way. Hey, my name is Raoul. How were these artifacts found? Some excavation was performed in the catacombs around the turn of the century. The ruins of a strange abode were found. A skeleton was discovered within, along with the artifacts. It is believed that this was the body of Eric, but nobody has ever really proved it. No DNA testing back then, huh? <laughs> Where are these artifacts now? We have kept them on display in the Opera Library for years. Please feel free to go see them. There are some other documents in the library which will give you some information on the Phantom. Are you sure you have no suspects at the Opera? I trust my staff implicitly. Our stage manager has confirmed that all employees were at their positions when the crime occurred. I have sent everyone home. I suppose you could return to the theater tomorrow should you wish to question anyone who is not here now. Who do you suggest I speak with? Besides you. Find Charles, our stage manager. He needs to be able to help you. Where can I find Charles? You should be able to find him in the stage left wing at his post. How do I get around the theater? Go east into the orchestra pit and then into the trap room. That should lead you backstage. Charles can direct you from there. All right. What do you want me to do then, monsieur? I would like you to explore the theater. Talk to people you see. Find out where this madman is hiding. Good lord, man, there were people murdered tonight. And I don't think this lunatic is going to stop there. Please, I ask you, Raul, as a friend. See what you can find out. I shall be in my office shortly. Come find me and give me a report on your progress. Then I'll give you further instruction. Good luck. All right. Until later, Monsieur Boy. I shall see you soon, Raoul. How exciting! We are on a case now. The case of the fallen chandelier, guys. And a hidden madman named the Phantom. <laughs> and Christine on stage, and me being Raoul myself. <laughs> Alright, is there any blood on the seats? People getting crushed by the heavy chandelier, guys. Uh, yeah, this is an old adventure game, so. We do have to pick the action here at the bottom corner. The crumpled ornate chandelier looks like a dead animal lying on top of the seats. You are amazed that even more people were not hurt in the mishap. So how many people exactly died here, guys? He didn't tell us the exact number, but uh, I think it is a very heavy casualty rate. It is a very large chandelier. A whole bunch of unlucky people down below, guys. So note to self, do not sit underneath large objects while inside the opera house and also any other theaters guys. <laughs> Don't sit underneath huge, huge hanging objects. That is an advice <laughs> that, that I'm giving to you all. The seats look as if they might be comfortable. <laughs> But with that hulking wave of the, sh of the chandelier sitting on them, you are grateful to be standing now. Alright, let's go to um, the stage. The orchestra pit. It's a huge orchestra pit.
Music stands are identical, empty, and made of a thin black metal. Music stands have remained relatively unchanged for a century, guys. It's the materials that they are made of that has changed. The floor of the orchestra pit is called naturally the pit. It is made of wood. You know, you notice it is very scruffy, having been trampled upon by many orchestras throughout the years. Folding chairs. How interactive are these items? I wonder, guys. Let's open the folding chairs if that is possible. <laughs> you attempt to open the chairs, but quickly deduce that this action would be a waste of my time and energy. <laughs> Prompter's box. Okay, let's go. Let's go underneath the sage. We need to look for someone. What is his name again? So under the sage. Prompter's box is up there. We can go onto the sage. Trap door. Oh, that's how it works, guys. Trap doors, and you push this uh, this staircase around to get to those traps. That's how actors and actresses come on stage. <laughs> there are no elevators back then. Boxes and props. There's a carton here too. Look at the carton. Empty carton. Junk. Lever. Can we go onto the stage? Ooh, let's do that, guys. Let's check out the stage. Can I... Oh, my head is sticking out. Oh my god, the phantom! The scene... Okay, <laughs> he obviously doesn't see us now. <laughs> He's crawling across the stage. Guys. Wow. Wait, again, one more time. Does he walk the opposite way now? No. <laughs> what the heck, guys? A phantom running across the stage like that? Is there a way to push this staircase to the trapdoor, guys? So this box is here is only for the prompt. This opening. This is the trapdoor in the middle. So now we push the staircase. I need to go... Onto Sage. Push this. The prompter said. Can we do it? Oh, it worked! Open the trap door first, alright. A climb. The uh okay hold on. Maybe I need to pull the lever guys. There's a lever here too. Is it mechanically activated? Pull the lever. Is that how it works? Oh right. The Phantom, guys. He walks this way. <laughs> Do we have an exit? Walk across the apron. Across the say No signs of him, though. Can we follow him? He went this way. Oh! Yellow frame. What is that?
A color frame is a piece of hardware that slides into the saw at the front of the lightning instrument. There is a yellow color gel in this one. Color gel, what is that? Um, take the gel. A color frame is a piece of hardware. Okay, okay. What is a gel though? The yellow gel. Is it like oil? Is it lubricant? Yellow frame. The headset, which a stage manager or stagehand uses to communicate with other members of the stage during the performance. The thing is, there's no use icon on the menu here. <laughs> there's no use icon. Purchase lines. So where did he go? He went this way through the purchase lines. Counterweight. These are hemp ropes running from the top or of the arbor up and over the head block, down through a rope log at the fly gallery, along a take up block at or below the stage floor. And up to the bottom of the arbor. <laughs> they are pulled to change the position of the attached scenery. Oh, the backdrops, guys. So using the ropes, we can change the backgrounds. Right. Counterway system. Lock rail. A leg or tormentor is a vertical side curtain used for masking. They can be of various colors. Yeah, the layers of curtains on stage, guys. I think that's what they are. Cyclorama. There are so many different names here. <laughs> stage names. Call the eye for short. No, the side. For short, the cyclorama is a large piece of scenery which defines the back of the stage setting. It's usually made of large dark curtain, as it is today. So that is that goes behind the backdrops, guys. Right? We are learning a whole bunch of stage vocabulary now. <laughs> it was on the other side, though. Similar things. The left stage. Oh, oh, there's someone here, guys. Did you see the phantom? Did you see the phantom walking across the stage? The gentleman looks to be in his late 20s. He appears to be very busy. Oh, maybe he didn't notice, guys. So who are you? What do you do? Yes, what is it? Are you Charles? Are you Charles? Yes, I am Charles. <laughs> the Sniff is your last name. <laughs> Mr. Sniff. Please, tell me about your job here at the theater. I am the stage manager. Since you obviously do not know what that is, I shall tell you. Quite literally, the stage manager runs the show once rehearsals have ended and the show opens. A show belongs to the director only until opening night, at which time I am in charge. Please, continue describing your job. From my command station here, I stay in constant communication with virtually everyone in the theater. I make sure the show runs smoothly and without a hitch. I follow the script as it goes and call all of the sound and lighting cues. And although it's not in my official job description, I handle certain personnel problems when they arise. What sort of problems? What sort of personnel problems? 
I make sure everyone is here on time, for one thing. I take care of personality clashes between stars. I make sure everyone is happy. Please tell me a little about the Opera House. The Opera House was designed by Charles Garnier and first commissioned during the reign of Emperor Napoleon III. Construction began in 1854 with demolition of the already existing buildings on the site, and it wasn't until 1861 that the first foundation stone was laid. The opera did not officially open until 1875. Go on, please. This history is fascinating. The work was halted in 1870 with the onset of the Franco-Prussian War. Napoleon III was exiled, and the Commune of Paris took control of the city. The opera was taken over by the Communards as an arsenal and warehouse and military prison. A prison? Many prisoners were incarcerated and tortured deep in the catacombs below the opera. By 1872, the Communards were defeated and the new government was installed. Three years later, the Opera House was completed and staged its first performance. Well, that certainly explains all the catacombs, guys. All the tunnels and gates and cells underneath the Opera House. Very interesting. How big is this building? It covers nearly three acres. It is 17 stories high, seven of which are below street level. Wow. The stage itself is 175 feet wide and 85 feet deep. Electric lighting replaced the auditorium gasoliers in 1881. It is a magnificent building. Tell me more about the catacombs. The water level on the site was bad. There is a lake deep beneath the stage area. It's now basically a sewer. Ever since the commune was in control and the area was used as a prison, there seems to be a perpetual chill that no amount of modern electric lighting is able to dispel. Some folks believe the area down there to be haunted. How do I get down there? You can't. It was sealed off long ago. If there is a way down there, then it's through some secret passage we don't know about. By the way, I am Detective Raoul Montan with the Surete. What of it? Can you tell me anything about tonight's mishap? Everyone was in the appropriate positions. There was no one in the fly loft or catwalks. All the lighting is controlled from the booth. I cannot imagine how it could have happened. <laughs> how was the chandelier attached? There is an alcove in the ceiling through which the chandelier's electrical wires and harness are rigged. You must go to the fly loft and traverse catwalks above the ceiling to get there. The chandelier is periodically pulled up into the alcove for maintenance. That's it then, guys. So that connection has been tampered with. So, so whoever did it, guys, went up to that ceiling and cut some wires off, guys, and or ropes. I wonder if he did it at that exact moment or not, guys, during the performance. Bef just before the chandelier dropped, did he did it right at that moment, or he prepared beforehand? Do you have any suspects regarding tonight's mishap? Well, I don't, but some of the ballet girls certainly do. The ballet girls? How? What do you mean? The ballet girls know something? They saw something suspect? Suspicious? They believe it's the opera ghost, you see. One ballerina in particular is spreading rumors. And who would that be? Opera ghost? <laughs> Do you mean the phantom of the opera? Yes, isn't it silly? They are saying it's the phantom's ghost returned to seek revenge on those who did him wrong a hundred years ago. <laughs> we saw him ourselves on stage just now, guys. 
Maybe he was just an actor practicing his role. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe he is a real phantom. Have you seen a man with a cape recently? No, I have not seen anyone since everyone went home an hour ago. Who is this ballerina? Can I speak with her? Her name is Julie Geary. I believe she is still here, probably in her dressing room. I have not seen her leave tonight. Some of the cast stay all hours at the theater. Where is Mademoiselle Geary's dressing room? If you go through the stage right door backstage, you will find a staircase to the dressing rooms. Who else might be here? As soon as I finish what I'm doing, I'm going home. You might find Christine Florent in her dressing room. She is so dedicated to her art that she never leaves. Really though? Does she live here? <laughs> is she paying rent? <laughs> Goodbye for now, and thank you, sir. I want to go meet this Christine, guys. You're welcome. Ramu. Now I can finish writing down these sound cues so I can get out of here and go home. Goodbye, sir. Where's my beautiful Christine? My name is Raul. We are destined to be together. <laughs> Alright, these are the flats, the walls. Uh, shall we try pushing one of these uh, flats? I don't know. It's control somewhere, guys. Probably controlled by the levels and ropes. Yeah. Okay, let's go backstage. We can get to the dressing rooms from here. Ooh, a spiral staircase. Look at that. Some props. Climb down the stairs. Oh, we can go up, we can go down. Two different directions. So if we climb down, that goes underneath the stage again. Let's go try that. Does it connect to the previous room that we were in? Uh, what? Someone didn't call heads. Calling heads? When you drop something is the first rule in the theater. You think? There doesn't appear to be anyone up there. Whoa, we almost died. Someone dropped this just now, guys. We almost got crushed by this. What is it? It's... We a sandbag. Someone dropped this on purpose. We almost got killed, everyone. Unbelievable. I wasn't even paying attention to that. Ordinary theater sandbag. The rope attached to it looks as conspicuous he cut. Wow. We almost died. T let's take this with us. <laughs> really? We got a sandbag. Wow. Uh, they are commonly used in theaters as counterweights. This one is heavy, 10 pound bag. And the rope attached to looks conspicuously cut. Wow. Amazing, guys. We got lucky there. Oh, you know what? Okay, hold on. No, I need to go up. I need to check. Where it was hang, the same back. <laughs> Maybe the assailant is still there. Let's go up the staircase. We shouldn't go down at this very moment. We need to go catch our killer. Oh! I see a shadow. It was the phantom again. Where is he? No signs of him anywhere. Can't walk over the house. I know I'm missing a lot of items here, guys, but uh, I want to... I want to catch him. So let's just go after him. Then we can come back and look at the items. A blue frame. Oh, another frame. So let's pick that one up. Yeah, blue frame with blue color gel. No signs of him anywhere. Climb into the. Is this where 
the chandelier was attached. This rope, guys. Chandelier cable. This is the one. Look at this. The ropes look frayed, guys. Maybe they were cut? I don't know. Apparently, the killer cut the chandelier from here. <laughs> it's obvious now. Let me see a note. A note attached to the rope. It seems to be some kind of note. I'll take the note. My dear Raoul, it is time that we settle our differences. A hundred years is a long time to hold a grudge, and the weight of it has become unbearable. Revenge is the sweetest of all music, and soon the Opera House shall be ringing with it! Oh gee. Well, the note is written specifically for me. Just because I have the same name as the old Raoul? Huh. We'll just keep going this way. The stage down below doesn't look that big, guys. <laughs> but we've been walking through this always for so long. This uh, catwalks up the stage. Okay, this is the end, apparently. The end of the uh, the walkway. Column support. And another frame, the green frame. All different color gels. The crates. That crate looks open. Oh, does seem probably contain nasty things that bite. <laughs> Alright, let's not touch it there, guys. Another hand. Beam. Okay, nothing out of the ordinary. Lighting instrument, the lights, the front lights, spotlights. More instruments. What is that? Sandbag! It was rough from here, the sandbag. Or maybe not. This is not... It's right by the staircase, the spiral staircase. So this is not the one. Not the spot. But we'll look at it though. Uh, the Santa's 20 pound sandbag used in theatre as uh, the world over. The proscenium arch opening in the wall that separates the audience from the stage. Hmm. Cable. Counterweight system looks far more complex from this angle than it did from safe floor. Counterweights. Yeah, we need counterweights. Uh, we, if we lower objects from uh, up here, then we need a counterweight to balance the weight on this side. Back wall. Sandbag. Okay, so this is a spiral staircase. So the sandbag is probably somewhere around here, right? But I don't see any ropes attaching to other bags. Maybe it was thrown from here. What about the ropes close to the staircase? This one, guys. This one has the um, other sandbags here. Counterweight in sandbags. Let's look at this. The top. Look, look at the counterweights. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Nothing to be seen here then. Except the note. And uh, the green frame. Oh, that's all there is.
Now... <laughs> we... We're being careful this time, guys. Watch up ahead. Watch above you first before we design the staircase. Now, another frame, another one. Wow, how many different colors, guys? This one is red. Props. Walter Graffiti, what does he say? Vive la France, vive la France. Door is locked. I wonder if this is the same door as the um, um, the one that we saw underneath the sage. There's a door over there too. Hey, it's a different orientation design, different angle. <laughs> so a lot of things to look at. Mugs. Can you can we take any items here? I wonder. Not walk across. Oh, this is the bottom floor. Right, 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 right. Hold on, guys. <laughs> I'm a little bit confused here. So, yeah, the bottom of the staircase. There, are, there are multiple floors apparently. I thought we went back up again. Yeah, we can keep going down. So that's the bottom floor. We just want to make sure. Yeah, you can only climb up from this point on. No, it's only this one single room. Alright. Now, let's see if we can get to the backstage area where uh, the dressing rooms are. Yeah. Door at the far end. Someone going to put the lever, guys, and then flip all the staircase panels. <laughs> dressing room? I think this is his dressing room. Bulletin board. It is cluttered with several notices, mostly cruise calls, casting announcements, rehearsals, schedules, and other theater related business. The trash. Knock. Please knock first. <laughs> okay, so this is the ballerina, guys. Uh huh. Still practicing in these late hours. Very hard working. She looks to be about 12 years old, but she is tall and lithe. She has a wiry, athletic figure typical of most ballerinas. 
Hello, young lady. Bonjour, monsieur. Have a seat while I practice. How long will it take? <laughs> uh, you sure you can talk while you practice? Really? Bonjour. I am Detective Raoul Montand. I am Julie Geary. What can I do for you? What are your thoughts regarding the Chandelier tragedy? I am glad you asked. It was the Opera Ghost. He has returned. I always knew he would. How do you know it's the ghost? Because I saw him. You saw him? With your own eyes? Where? When? Where and when did you see him? It was two nights ago. I was coming out of my dressing room and I saw him on the staircase. He turned to me, then quickly ran up the stairs. I was too frightened to follow. Did you hear his footsteps? If not, then he is a ghost. But if you hear those, if you heard those steps, then that means he is a human, guys. That means he is alive. Did you hear he make any sounds? What did he look like? He was dressed formally, but his clothes were rather old-fashioned, of the kind they wore during his day. He had on a cape and was carrying a cane. He was not wearing a mask. I only caught a glimpse of his face, for it was very dark. It looked like a skull. It looks like a skull. Maybe he is wearing a mask. <laughs> a skull mask. Why do you say that you always knew he would return? Because I have dreamt about it. I have some of the powers that my great-grandmother had, you see. Tell me about your dreams. I see him in a haze of darkness and shadows. He emerges. He has a woman with him dressed in white. But I cannot see her face. She is wearing a mask. I think I know who she might be, though. Christine? Who do you think she is? The Phantom was in love with a singer named Christine Day. It could be her, but I have a theory that it might be Christine Florent. There is some kind of connection between the two. Not only do they look alike, but they are both gifted singers. Perhaps that is why the ghost has returned here and now, because of her. Maybe they are related in a way. Your great-grandmother? Please, enlighten me. Madame Geary worked at the opera as what today we would call an usher. She looked after the boxes. She was in charge of the Phantom's personal box. Tell me more about Madame Geary. To put it bluntly, she was a psychic. She communicated with the Phantom without ever seeing him or speaking to him directly. She also wrote a book about him which you can find in the opera library. communicated with him? Yes. He would leave her instructions in his box, but she almost always knew beforehand what he wanted and provided it. The ghost tipped her very well. He was good to her. Tell me about the book. She wrote it around the turn of the century, after the Phantom's supposed death. She became something of an authority on the man. If you haven't read it, you probably should. His personal box. Go on, please. It was box five. He had ordered the manager of the opera to never sell the box, as it was his. He would attend the opera in that box, but no one knew how he got into it. He certainly didn't go through the door. Didn't your great-grandmother see him in the box? Never. She never tried to see him. She was a little afraid of him despite his kindness. But my mother said that great-grandmother told her that Box 5 had some kind of trick in it. A trick? Tell me a little about yourself. Well, I am a dancer with the ballet corps. I am taking acting lessons and hope to become a prima donna like Christine Florent. How long have you been associated with the opera? My family has been with the opera all the way back to my great-grandmother. My mother was a costume seamstress. My grandmother was in the ballet, like me. My great-grandmother worked for the public sector of the opera. Do you know Christine Florent well? She's very sweet, 
but she tends to keep to herself, like most prima donnas. I believe that she knows more about this chandelier incident than she lets on. Hmm, you think so, huh? What do you think she knows? When I mentioned that I saw the opera ghost the other day, she turned quite pale and said not to spread such rumors. Merci. I shall speak with you later. Adieu. Adieu, monsieur. Alright, keep busy now. <laughs> that was very enlightening, guys. This conversation here. More than I expected. <laughs> Or anything interesting to look at inside this room? Costume rack. Look at those costumes. As expected, the rack contains several styles and types of costumes spanning more periods of history. More drops, posters. So the left door. I want to knock on the door this time. <laughs> Let's be polite and knock or just talk to the door. Uh oh never mind. The door to the dressing room is closed and locked. No one is inside. Where is Christine then guys? Where is Christine? Are there other dressing rooms here? Maybe on another floor? Maybe. 